Hi everyone and welcome to another video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. Today we are giving you a help style video, not necessarily a direct review video. And this is going to be a little different than maybe other videos that you see out there on how to pick a digital piano because that's exactly what we're here to help you with as well. How is it going to be different? Well, we are going to put these factors in a specific order. And if you follow this order, in our humble opinion, you are going to wind up mo not only faster, but at a better, more satisfying set of possibilities for you to choose from within the digital piano world. So this is based on our decades of experience, both in terms of selling instruments, but as well as playing and performing on those instruments. So this is going to go through a very specific order. We'd invite you uh, to follow that along and see where it takes you. But we think that it's going to land you at your perfect dream digital piano. So thank you so much for joining us today. If it's the first time that you're seeing us here, please do subscribe at now or at any point during the video because we'd love to have you back. So without further ado, let's get started picking your brand new digital piano. I'm going to put these considerations into a very specific order. You always hear about the same kinds of things that you should be thinking about, but to me, they have to go in this order, otherwise you're going to wind up putting things out of priority that really should have had more importance or less importance than perhaps what you wound up giving or some of the advice that you got. And the whole idea here is you're not really looking at the entire industry. Your needs put you into a category. And you need to get to that category as quickly as possible and only once you know what category you're in should price really start to play a factor. There's no point in falling in love with a piano that you can't afford or uh, there's no point in testing instruments that don't have specific features that ultimately you're going to need. So this is a bit of a methodology to go from the very beginning of your research right to the very end and help you get to a happy decision. Very first consideration I'm going to tell you about here is is it portable or is it stationary? Can this instrument be something that stays in one place or are your needs going to have to move it around? Because that's a big fork in the road. There's an entire part of the business that creates portable pianos and once you're into that art market then you start getting into whether the action is something you like, the tone, the extra features. If it's stationary, well that's you know the second half uh, of the market and some of the price points are different, some of the actions are different, some of the features are different. So that's the very first major decision for you to make um, and that could be fairly simple. If you are going to have to move this around more than a couple of times at most a year, there's a good chance that you're going to want to have this instrument be portable. That's going to take you into the realm of things like the Roland FP series or the Kawhi ES series, the Yamaha P series, um, the Casio uh, you know, PXS or CDP series. These are all of the different series of portable digital pianos that are fairly affordable um, and in a lot of cases have some great features. Um, more and more, virtually all of those now come with available permanent stands which you can have set up for your home, but then if you do need to take them away, you can just usually with a couple of wing nuts, detach them and it's a portable unit. So there are kind of ways to have it set up as a hybrid where it could be both a stationary most of the time, but with two little screws, it's already uh, you know, packaged as a self-contained portable unit. So that's the first consideration. Uh, portable or stationary. That's going to take you in one of these two directions. The next consideration is going to be touch. Touch on a piano is not equal to any other feature. This is like asking a golf player how a club feels when they swing it or a tennis player with the racket. It's the tool in which you are uh, interacting with to achieve your craft. And if you have a tool that just doesn't respond the way that you're expecting it to or just doesn't feel right, almost no other feature or consideration is ever going to make up for that. You have to get an action that you love. So first, portable stationary, then once you're into one of those two worlds, you've got to go find an action uh, that you can really, really be happy with. 
there could be several. There's going to be some uh, that are going to be at the Cadillac range, where it's like, wow, that feels amazing, but maybe a little more than I wanted to spend. And then there's going to be some that you still feel really comfortable with. You still feel it responds very well. It's within the range. And you're going to know right away when you start to play a digital piano that feels right. That could be based on what you were already used to in the past. It could be based on nothing at all. Like I always tell customers that I'm speaking to directly, some of these things you don't have to be able to explain to anyone except yourself. After price, then we get into the tone of the piano. Uh, now some people might put features above tone, but for me, if you are going to be playing the piano 90% of the time and all of the other sounds are only going to be um, uh, secondary considerations. You need the touch that you want, but then that touch needs to be triggering a sound that inspires you to want to be playing the instrument. And there's quite a range in, uh, in piano tone that's out there, both in terms of the technique that the instrument uses to create that sound, as well as just the overall character of the sound. So you've got some pianos that are really bright and have a nice sharp clear tone. There's other ones that have a warmer sound. And for the evaluation of the sound, make sure to use both the onboard speakers as well as headphones. Um, because the headphone technology that's available now can give an extremely enhanced experience uh, out of the same keyboard that without headphones might feel a little lackluster. So you do need to know whether you're going to be using this more with headphones or without. Um, and then whatever that is, that's what you're going to use to judge the piano tone. And make sure that it's something that just feels amazing, uh, you know, lights your ears up, and makes you want to play. After we've got through those three considerations, so remember we're starting with portable versus stationary, then finding an action that you love, and then once you're behind the action that feels great, now you're at a tone that really inspires you. Once you've established those three, now you're going to be into a fairly small set of instruments. Um, it could, you, this is going to narrow things down to two or maybe three instruments. It could even narrow you down to one, uh, depending on how, how specific your preferences for were for those first three considerations. Because now it's into feature. Uh, do you need it to have Bluetooth? Do you need it to have just a few sounds or are there needs where you actually want a few hundred sounds uh, on board? Do you need it to have an onboard arranger, meaning uh, having a band kind of play beside you or behind you that you could direct? Does it need to have a microphone input? Does it need to have an onboard uh, recorder? These are the major components that uh, fall into the extra features because all the basic features are completely the same right across the board. They all now have transpose, they all have metronome, they all usually have some kind of built-in rhythm, they all have the ability to split the keyboard into two sections so one sound is on one hand, one sound is on the other. They all have the ability to blend at least two sounds together uh, in, into one such as a piano and strings. So, those are standard at this point, including a uh, headphone jack. So really the extras that are optional and don't always uh, you know, carry on from one to the other would be you know, Bluetooth connectivity, USB audio connectivity, uh, whether there's a full sound bank of tones like two or 300 or whether it's somewhat more limited, whether it has an onboard arranger, whether it has an onboard uh, recorder. Those are really the big ones. And then finally, after you threw all of that, really comes down to price. Uh, I would say that the biggest mistake people make is putting price first because it confuses the route to find the right product. When you put price last, it doesn't mean that you've changed your budget. Sometimes, in fact, it might even mean that you've moved down in budget because you've been able to eliminate some instruments that for the wrong reasons, maybe we're on your list already. Maybe it does mean that your budget's moved up, but at least you've narrowed it down to the subset of instruments that are really going to inspire you. There's absolutely no point in spending $500 on an instrument that is not gonna make you wanna play, whereas spending seven or $800 on an instrument would have had you at the instrument for an hour a day loving 
your piano experience. So that's why I say certainly price is always a consideration, but put it last after you've gone through all of those others. Because then at least you're down into that set of instruments that you know are going to thrill you, and then you can decide whether you want to be at the top range of that subset, or whether you want to be in the middle or the bottom range of that subset. I hope that that's been helpful. That is exactly the type of information that we love to walk customers through here at the store. I do this with my friends all the time, and so here on YouTube as well. We offer it to you with the hope that it's going to improve and possibly accelerate your shopping process wherever you are around the world and whatever brands you happen to be looking at. If it's the first time that you have seen us here on the channel and you found this helpful, uh, please stick around, watch some other videos, and subscribe. Become a member of our community. Hit that notification bell. We're always coming out with new videos. We always want them to be as helpful as possible, so we'd love to hear your feedback on what you found good about this video and we'll see you soon.